Hello, all. Welcome to FMA Discussion. This is episode 88, and tonight we're featuring Ron Kazakowski from TFW Weapons. Um, if you have not already, uh, hit uh, subscribe to FMA Discussion on YouTube, where you can see this interview and other great ones that have been uh, podcast on the uh, previous episodes. In addition, uh, stick around at the end. I'm going to reveal who's what guests are coming up before uh, Christmas and all that good stuff. Uh, so uh, stay tuned at the end. So hello, how are you, Ron? Thank you for coming on. Hey, huh, thank you for having me. This is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you, uh, how did you guys get hammered uh, with a lot of snow or what? Yeah, we probably got a little over a foot here this morning. It's hard to tell, you know, because it was also a lot of drifts. Some places were thicker than others. We had more on our vehicles than we had on our sidewalk. <laughs> yeah. Being in a northwest corner, we got we we just we got shell. We got like a foot and a half. So I don't. Uh, I ten, I just choose a shovel. So um, I just refuse to get a snow blower. But <laughs> um, <laughs> but the result was uh, I had to stay up to like three in the morning just so I wouldn't go out this morning. So I, I went like in shifts, intervals. I go out there, yeah, do a little, yeah, yeah. a couple hours, go back out, do a little. But I tell you, my body feels like. Uh, it, it, it's like worse than going to the gym. I feel like it, in the middle of the night, somebody just started beating on me with a yeah, yeah. or something. <laughs> I get into that Kuntal positioning when I do it. So, uh, I, <clears throat> I tell you, so I don't use my back. And yeah. uh, the, the low the low positioning really helps. Oh, I'm yeah. No, no, I was, yeah some, it was just basically that. Yeah, because if I did it with my back, oh, my God, I'd be in traction. Yeah, oh, you'd be done. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, definitely, because, uh, man, that's that's not fun, yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah. You know, that's pretty pathetic. You know, how come you're injured? Well, I was snow shoveling. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to get that excuse yet. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> so for those who are watching, if you just jumped in, please tell us uh, where you're watching from and continue to hit the like button and all that. If you're just jumping in, we just got started. And we got Brian and Gail. Hey, Gail, there's trouble. No, <laughs> just kidding, Gail. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but um, all right. So let's. You know, I'm excited about this because you know I've had you know all my previous guests, and I know we. I sent a couple group mails out to you, which I, I know you didn't see in the beginning. You know, the obviously it was definitely uh, to get you on here before. But I'm, again, to reiterate, I'm kind of excited because this is my first episode. We're kind of just dealing. with with weapons. So in other words, I've covered obviously gas and systems, but we haven't covered, like I haven't covered the tools, you know, what the people are using to yeah. get on this show. So, uh, so that's exciting. So let's get some, I guess, well, let's start with just, I guess, some historical perspective and all that. I'm going to guess early 2000s is when you kind of started doing this. And I only reference that time frame is because my students, kindly enough, back in 2004, gifted me, they all kind of chipped in and they gifted me this. Oh, oh yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> and um, that was, uh, if that falls off, that'd be trouble. Um, that was around circa 2004. So I'm guessing a couple of years. So when was it? When did you, uh, when did you kick this off? Well, um, my first trip to the Philippines, I was looking for bladed weapons and I couldn't find any. Uh, actually, I was uh, Apollo Ladra. I don't know if you know who he is. He's uh, definitely know the name. Yes, yes. Uh, Grand Tuhan Leo Gahe. Um, I told him, I said, man, I want to find some uh, swords. I wanted some Filipino swords. I had none. Um, I had some stuff, but it wasn't that great. Um, so he brought me around to where we thought we could get it. And I, I wish I had it here because it's a bunch of cheap tourist stuff. That's all you could really find. You know, um, there's a lot of tourist swords out there, you know, in the Philippines. It's, it, uh, and at the time there, I, I don't know, it didn't seem like there was a lot of blade makers or either that, that was, uh, my first trip there. So we didn't find anything. And then my second trip there, I found, uh, uh, somebody who had, um, he doesn't want me to mention his name. I hope you don't mind, uh, no, no, no. Because, you know, the way the government is and the way, uh, people are, he doesn't want anybody coming up, you know, he's in the middle of work. We're doing good with this. So, uh, I can't mention any names, but, um, yeah, he, uh, 
he showed me a karambit and uh i was so fascinated with that that um i said back then if you remember karambits were really in and uh in fact this is probably the first karambit that i i got uh, from mm -hmm. him i don't think you see yep you can see it. oh yeah oh yeah yeah you can see yeah and i probably got this way back then and um what had happened is uh he gave me a box full of them to take home and i sent back the money and i said you know can you make other things and you know can we build on this and we started getting the gununtings uh the gununtings went over big and it seemed like overnight this business was a success overnight wow i couldn't even believe it and and it helped to know i mean you know traveling around with you know larry and uh you know of course guru dan on asanto and um at the time you know i was going to all uh seminars with Edgar Salite and i got to know everybody so it was kind of you know uh i already had the connection so um i knew people all over the united states and of course elsewhere too because of all that you know the camps and the seminars and everything so it just like went like that you know and i think forums were the only thing going back then if i'm not mistaken yeah i think um no definitely i don't recall the big yeah, social yeah. media sites yeah yeah then, then facebook i'm not facebook uh myspace that, that's that's right. That was that. Yeah, that was, that was the that first thing after the forums. Yeah, yeah. and forums started. They just died out, and then MySpace yeah. was the big thing. And MySpace put TFW on the map. Um, it put my school on the map too because I started getting people from all over the place coming down for private lessons right. and you know, uh, seminars, things like that too. So, so like the, the social media helped. Then MySpace died out, and then you know. The rest is as you see it is on on facebook i've been doing the same thing on facebook since i don't even know what year it was i can't even tell you years on that you know um i think yeah somebody might know i i i, I think maybe oh five oh six i i don't know somewhere yeah i can't think either i, I know i went on facebook because somebody told me about facebook yeah I went on facebook and um i had like i don't even know 600 names or something at the time and um, what had happened, <coughs> excuse me, oh, my mouth is dry, I should get water. <laughs> um, my uh, um, Facebook, um, th they didn't allow any kind of advertising or anything. And I was telling people about my plays and people were getting mad at me. So I went off for a while. And then what had happened is, uh, <coughs> geez. Oh, don't worry, that's just COVID. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, hey, incidentally, um, don't be alarmed. But I, I have COVID. <laughs> but uh, th th then uh, what I had. Oh, thank you, babe. Um, hold on one second. My mouth is dry. Okay. Um, and, and, and you know when MySpace died out, face everybody was telling me go on Facebook, and then I went on Facebook and it is now what it is you know i've been doing the same thing as you know just advertising and making you know i made up pages and stuff like that just so just uh, oh. with the you reference going over there a second time which kind of you know created you know or i guess i paved the way for you to do this just uh, just for the folks about what year was that uh 2001 so okay, I mean, so, yeah, all right. So I, I knew it was early two thousands. Okay, so you bring back this karambit um, and all that, and you see if he can do it. Um, so it sounds like that was the the initial weapon, like to kind of catapult this whole thing off. Um, it was. I brought back a box of karambits. Actually, yeah. I think there was like twenty five of them or something. I think I went home with, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, that's what kicked it off was, uh, you know, the, the Karambas. Because that was the end thing. Nobody could find Karambas back then. Mm -hmm. They had a few cheap ones that said Ninja on it. And <laughs> I still got one somewhere, you know, because I had one myself, you know. And, uh, and th that was it. And then when people saw these, they went nuts. And I, I think I sold them in two weeks. <laughs> oh, so over here? You, okay, okay. That, yeah, over that's... here I sold them. Yeah, not in the Philippines. Oh, yeah. and that's... And then in lieu of selling them so quickly, that kind of catapulted. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got you. I got you. I just I knew there was a missing 
piece in there. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I think so, we started off at about 20 different, uh, well, not quite 20 yet, about 12 different blades. And then we, you know, we just kept building up from there. Now I think we've got over 100 different items on yeah, there. Yeah, no, it's absolutely, and we're going to get into that later. It's pretty extensive. So, all right. Yeah. So, all right. So you send the money over there. Obviously, you, you get, you know, so is this kind of what created the idea and the inspiration to take? take this beyond karambits um well like i said i always wanted the swords and you know uh you know uh, to tell you the truth i did not think it would boom like that what had happened is uh i wanted swords and what i figured i'd get just enough to you know I, i'd probably make a few bucks i assumed i would um but i i just wanted i always wanted because i you know i did these styles and i um, I had nothing for Kuntao. I had nothing for Kali. I mean, it was, you know, the, <laughs> so I just, you know, especially now, I, by then I was doing Pekiti Terja and, you know, well into it. And I wanted to uh, um, start, uh, you know, with the Ganunting and, you know, a few of the others that were involved, you know, and Panute I've always heard about and I've seen them and I always thought they were beautiful and I always wanted one and <laughs> I finally got it. You know, I'd like to say, uh, this could only happen with Filipinos, I'll tell you, because this, this, uh, we're here. Everything is done on contracts and everything like that. We did this on a handshake. <laughs> you know, back when, yeah, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. You had to draw a bunch of leaves. Yes. So, so when you, <laughs> so when you, when you knew there was gonna, like when you were feeling the potential success and all that. Um, again, did you you went back? I'm assuming after you sold the twelve you went back over there. I mean, to kind of, yeah, yeah. Okay. I've been there like probably, I don't even know, 12 times, maybe more. I don't even know. I never counted. I might've lost count by now, <laughs> but um, I kept you know, going. And plus I was training with uh, Leo Gahe a lot, uh, especially back then, you know, was, uh, I, I would, I would go over there for like six weeks, okay. you know, and spend the time with uh, Leo, come back, couldn't even move, you know? <laughs> yeah. All that. All those hours of footwork at 5 a.m. Huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> um, hmm. But uh, so when you go back over there, I'm guessing circa 2002 or three or whatever. What I mean at that point, you know, you're. I know again. You you mentioned the cram, but did you when you went over to that? I'll say that just for the third time, just you know, uh, just for reference. Yeah. Um, is at that point did you discuss? With them, like, okay, let's try these swords now. Is that kind of what happened? Um, that happened. Um, uh, I used to have to get a card to call because now you go on the internet, but you used to have to get a, a, an Asian card or Southeast Asian. I can't remember. There used to be a card that was cheap where you could speak for an hour and a half, mm -hmm. and the card cost 35 bucks. And, um, and and I got that card, and I would call him. He'd get that card and call me when he when he could. And um, it it would uh, I think right after I sold the Ganun, uh, excuse me, the Karambits, um, I discussed the Ganunting, Panute, and a few others that I knew about. Some uh, Chris, okay, okay, yeah, okay. I think the Chris number five, I think, was our very first one, if I'm not oh, mistaken. Oh, that also that was the first. Okay, so then, so. You know, you go over there. You're telling him like what you'd like to try, what you think will do well. Bring it back over here to sell. Yeah, you yeah. Know, all that. So, sounds like the uh, a version of a Chris, the pen, uh, Gnuting, Panete, and uh, you know, the Campi Campilan. All the ones that I knew about. Oh, okay, okay. And so, believe me, a lot of these that uh, are out there, um, I didn't even know about, the, uh, and I'm still discovering new. No, ones. no, I'm sure it was a learning curve. I mean, you're, like you, I know, I know. Happening. I can't even believe this. And I started going to museums. Uh, they, they wouldn't allow us to take pictures. I'd sneak pictures, you know. Um, <laughs> I would draw them, um, you know, try to, uh, you know, get the the history off. I had Jesse, uh, my son Jesse, with me, and um, he would write down what they were saying while I was trying to sneak pictures. Uh, and uh, this is in uh, different, you know, I think that uh, Museum of Natural History, some yeah. arms museums and stuff like that. So it was really cool. He was able to write fast and see better than me. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, he, he, he would uh, write it down and we'd, we'd carry a notebook in the museums, you know. So it was kind of cool, actually, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, no. I'm, you know what? I'm just going to take an opportunity here to just to uh, thank some people that are tuning in. 
Okay. And again, if you are watching, if you have not already, please hit like and tell us where you're watching from. So we got, I uh, mentioned uh, Brian and Gail, and then we got uh, Tim Jones and <laughs> Andrew, Frank, hey, Frank, Jesse, <laughs> and just Andres, and Sue, hey, and oh. Brother A. Mark, John Cuspis. All right. Um, so, all right. So then, how do you, you know? You said on a handshake, so you kind of gave him what you what you knew. Obviously, where where as far as the more common sores and what you think it would do well as far as bringing back over here and selling. So you, you come back and you just tell him, okay. And then he kind of how many did he, he uh, initially make for you to sell? I guess like what was the trial number? At first, it was twelve. That's what we started okay. off with, and. Okay. Um, you know, uh, I can't remember exactly what 12 yeah, it was. Just, you know, just a general I, idea. Yeah, just, know, I, I missed a few. And um, and, and that, it, I would sell out so fast, I couldn't even believe it. You know, nobody had any Filipino sores back then. No, it's funny. I'm, just had sticks. <laughs> I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to remember, like, back then, I don't, like, and again, I'm, I'm not saying I'm obviously correct and all that, but I don't recall like early 2000s um somebody massively selling f you know like fma swords i'm saying yeah, no been, right? was, uh, i know rick tucci was online um yeah. not, i mean excuse me in the magazines um they used him to sell uh some sort of blades back then mm. and uh i never saw them um actually but um, you know, I, 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 I just heard some things about whatever the company was, you know, the, and, and yeah. so I said, ah, I don't know about that, you know, cause I wanted something that would be, you know, reliable. Mm. So, uh, you know, the way we do it now, I mean, they're reliable, you know, you see I'm online, I'm, I'm cutting trees down, I'm, uh, cutting logs in half, stabbing steel barrels, steel, stabbing steel chairs, not getting, you know, no damage to uh the the eye the, the swords at all to the edge nothing you know and you know th this is i i think what everybody wants even if they're hanging it on their wall as a piece of artwork yeah. you know it's a conversation piece to say right. that you know you can stab through a door and get get the yeah, person I mean, right if you had to <laughs> um so all right so you, you started with 12 of each one and obviously it sounds like things are are kicking off uh, right away and what have you. Um, in this point, you're, you're obviously making trips. Let's let's talk about like you know. Um, I'm going to show a couple of vids, of course, and all that. But before we get to that, I figured we could um, let's talk about the plano. I mean, like you know, what's the metal? You know, for maybe those who don't know the process that goes, you know, involved okay. in making these things. Maybe the you know the wood, the metal, and what have you. Okay. Um the metal is very controversial because some people know about it some people wrote to me and said you know i know what you're talking about and <clears throat> i guess uh there's d2 steel which if i'm not mistaken is water hardened and 5160 that's uh <clears throat> that's um uh, oil hardened and uh what my friend had discovered is uh that you could sprinkle powdered um, uh, D2 in there while you're you're hardening it, while you're pounding it. I don't know. I'm not the blade maker, so I'm, I never saw how that was done. I saw it when it was done just with the 5160, but I've never seen how they do it that way. And um, I notice now, which everybody writes me and says, man, I used this uh, – I went camping for, you know, a, a month or something like that. And I, I use it every day and it's still sharp, <laughs> you know? So I guess the steel, this is what he discovered was the fact that um, it holds an edge longer than a lot of uh, just plain 5160, for example, you know? So um, I, I think it was a great discovery, you know? Mm. Yeah. So this, this, this was kind of cool, but like I said, it's very controversial. I have people that, went online and they bust my balls boy i'll tell you it's like <laughs> they sit there and regarding say, they do that and all this and it's like you know i'm trying to tell them I, I can't reason with people so i don't bother but i try to explain and that you we're not pounding two steels together it's the way it's done you know and you could do it 
by sprinkling the powdered form of it, you know. Okay. Okay. No, interesting. So they. So are there. Their issue is the choice of of metal or the process thereof of, of fabrication. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm not the uh, the blade maker, so yeah, yeah, I, no, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm just I sell them. <laughs> so it's it's basically a, uh, he discovered it uh, from a friend of his that's uh, a blade maker. He's from another country. Like I said, I'm not going to say much. I just want to, yeah, yeah, you know, no, no, no. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, um, you know, he discovered from a, a friend of his that was in another country that's a blade maker and been doing it a long time. And it is a rare process from what I understand, you know, and, and I don't hear of it, anybody else doing it. So uh, that's another thing. And I can tell you it's expensive because, you know, the steels, you know, I send them there. So, <laughs> so um. So the choice, okay. So obviously, you know. So you got. I mean, there's a, there's obviously a plant there. I mean, you know, you got you, you obviously got workers there and in the whole bit. I mean, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We had we had prior to quarantine, we had like twelve workers, I think, all together. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a wood carver that actually passed away. Something happened to him, and which is unfortunate because he was good, you know. Uh -huh. um, and we had, uh, you know, now that quarantine is going on everywhere we're only allowed four workers and with the mail system, the way it is and everything, and we're having a hard time and the way the Philippines, you can't even get from Island to Island right now. So, uh, I guess it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's been a little bit of a hassle with this year, you know, trying to get everything back in stock. Mm. We've got a lot out of stock, you know, but okay. we're getting okay. it in, we're trickling it in. So, and I'm sending out newsletters to people. You know, to, to actually, if anybody wants to go on the newsletter, all they have to do is go on the traditional Filipino weapons dot com homepage, scroll okay. down, and then they could add their email address on the uh, on the page. And that, uh, right right where it says, you know, add your name to the newsletter list and people on the newsletter list get first dibs on the the fast selling items, you know, so that helps because yeah. a lot of times I get things and bam, they're gone, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're, we're at the end, we'll make, we'll make, we'll definitely make a point of mentioning all the social media and all the stuff where people can definitely, you know, get a hold of you and what have you. And we got a few more people I just want to acknowledge. Hey, Ray from Belgium. Hey, Ray, Eric, Jundis. Eric, I sent you a message. And Franz, uh, oh, this is in terms of who was producing Filipino blades for American buyers in the early 2000s. Chris Cutlery in California was producing blades. Okay, okay. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I might have heard, yeah, but, um, and Bram, hey, GM Bram, and Mark, okay, all right. Um, so, okay, so, and then, like, wow, so you got, I mean, the plant, so, I mean, when things were going well, I, I, you know, probably that, 12 workers, you know, there is steel, you got, uh -huh. you got a wood carver there for the handles, um, Sounds, you know, sounds pretty, uh, pretty involved um, and all that. Uh, at this point, when you're introducing, you know, when you're finding your weapons and all that, I mean, obviously you're bringing kind of pictures, sketches, drawings to the blade maker. What, how's that go about? We, we sometimes Skype, like we're, we're trying to make a tactical gun hunting um, and uh, we're trying to make something different than what's out there right now, you know, mm. and we do, we have something in the works, an idea of something that's, you know, that's going to be good. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll Skype, you know, and we'll talk. That's the way we did it before. But the last one, the last one uh, was okay. Uh, I want to, I, I want something lighter, a little better, you know, um, than we, we had last time because it was uh it had too much steel on it, you might say, you know, oh, so we want to make something that's, uh, that, you know, that is nice and light to carry on the backpack if you need to, um, mm. or wherever they carry it. And, um, it, it rust proof and everything else. We got something in the works for that. So that's going to be, okay. yeah. So, um, so, uh, all right. So let's, let's jump into, um, um, so in the beginning, it sounds like obviously it was just FMA blades. You're, you're going with the more common oriented swords known, the Capalan, obviously the Panete, the Ganuting, um, the Chris, and all that. Um, what currently, I mean, I'm, you know, I think I have the answer to this, but we'll just hear from you. Um, 
what's uh what's the most popular FAA weapon to date that you're you're selling? The most popular, okay, well, is the Gununting. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, the the uh, second to that, boy, that's a that's a hard one because like the Kanban Thule goes. Uh, I probably am not. My, my, I'm probably destroying the uh, Filipino language there. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, Kanban Thule, I guess, that would be more the pronunciation. Um, the uh, Espadi Daga, the uh, the Sanduko Daga. Uh, those are very popular. Chris swords yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, are very popular. Um, uh, the camp, the campy line, uh, for Christmas, especially, you know, that's, that seems to be a very popular one. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what else, uh, the, the gee hole sticks, <laughs> the ironwood sticks. I'll tell you right now, those, I can't even keep them in stock. Yeah, like, I got, yeah, I got a pair. Like, what everybody are, wants one, you know, yeah. and, yeah. I'm hearing nobody's like hanging that on their wall. Everybody's you know, the, I get letters back or people writing me on Facebook say I got mine right next to my bed. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. I have a couple. I never thought about hanging it because of the swords, but you know, I, um, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I just didn't. Not that I couldn't, obviously, but I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. We got That's a few more. Man. Design. They've got ironwood sticks that are round, like Kamagong. Mm. Um, if you saw, I broke two, two thick. Kamagong sticks. Do, I think recall that. Um, hey, we got Jack Latour. We got the uh, man Zimbo. Hey, Anthony, David Goodrich, Graham, Tom. Hey, you Tom and Alvin. Hey, buddy. Oh, Brian Franklin. Okay. Hey, Brian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, so it sounds like. Uh, so th again, you know, obviously you're because uh, I don't. I mean, gosh, you started early two thousands. You're, I mean, still going. I mean, you're coming up on about twenty years, right? Close. Well, it'll be twenty years in February, actually. I, okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Years. And how I'm going to celebrate, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. But I mean, obviously, you're, you know, it goes without saying you're doing. I mean, you're doing something right. You, you know what I mean? Um, you know, I can test, but here, let's, uh, you know, just for the viewers who are checking in before we get into the other aspects of the weapons, other countries and all that, and, um, and your show and tell, let's, uh, let's show a couple videos. All right. So this, let's start with this guy, the Baron. I'll minimize myself while you can talk about it. I can't remember which bra. Oh, the moral bra. Okay. That is our TFW music we're using on there too. It's like uh, uh, Paul Kramer's helped me uh, put that together. He's the genius behind that music. <laughs> um, yeah, I put out a lot of videos like this just because uh, you know, just to show them off. No cut video or anything like that. Just to show them off. This I love. Uh, the Barong. Uh, we should be getting that probably by uh, February back in stock. I even sold my own, which I'm kind of mad about. Um, but somebody wanted one so bad, so I had to sell it. But uh, that thing, it, it, you fight different with it. A lot of people think if you fight like uh, Kali or Nisha Screamer, but that's, that's a very in-fighting weapon. Uh, really a very different way. Longer range is similar, but Close range. That's that's a, uh, quite different. That's the weapon uh, of Kung Tao, actually. As, from what I understand, that's what Joe Luffy has learned with the Balong. Quite interesting. I don't know what happened to the video, but <laughs> you <lose> you? <laughs> I oh, just do that long enough <laughs> just so it creates a bigger screen. This next one, I think, is absolutely folks that are watching. Um, I'm this. You know, I'm waiting to get this, but this is actually a, a beautiful set. Um, the short, you know, the spotty dagger. But this here is the Sandugo dagger. So let's uh, let's check this out. And I will lower. That's the Sandugo dagger, I think, right? Yes, that's the Sandugo dagger. Yep. That's from the north, where the Ispati dog is from the, uh, from the Vatayan region. 
although you'll see it in Busan also, I mean, but this is uh, more popular up uh, further north. Used as a tool of uh, farming, hunting, skinning animals. Uh, I'm sure back in the day it was used for people. <laughs> That's one interesting weapon. I love that one. That seems to be a favorite of a lot of people. A lot of people get that one as a go to weapon, I noticed. <laughs> That thing would chop a tree down very easily. Not that I'm recommending it, I'm just saying it. <laughs> Dagger's nice too, it feels nice. Yeah, that, I mean, I think that set is just, uh, and and the Espada Dagger set, I, 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 I think they're just, they're, uh, you know, beautiful. I mean, um, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I mean that that the, you were just talking about the barong, and that's you know it's funny. It's the only weapon because I don't I, I don't like to cut anything with them, or, but um, I had some bushes back, and it's the only weapon I use to actually like cut stuff with. Um, you know, and uh, you know this baby here. Um, yeah, I mean, look, folks that are watching, look at the spine on this thing. You know, if you're watching this, look at the spine. You know, I think it's like a quarter inch, if I'm not mistaken. No, I mean, this is like, this is, I mean, this, this is not like anything obviously flimsy. I mean, the spine on this thing is, yeah, is incredible, and um, you know, just good hacking power. You know, well, uh, just um, yeah. So that's the only one that's seen bushes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can see the way it's shaped with a fat belly like that, and a lot of times what they do is uh, uh, um, when, when, when it's used, it's like, you know, there's a lot of guiding and assisting for infighting and multi-man attack type of situations, and uh, it's very, very interesting, actually. Um, you know, you, you, you might say, well, how, you know, could a short blade like that go up against a... a um, a bigger blade. First of all, it takes it does take the balls to get in there. You know, I mean that's the thing, because of the way you defend, you know, um, it's slightly different. It's not like your roof or anything like that. This it's 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 a little different. So it's it's like not being afraid to go mm -hmm. after the the limbs. You know, uh, when somebody's wielding a weapon fast, and it has to be practiced. Like anything, you know, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you know, know, the otherwise you're just yeah, hitting yeah. and moving backward. You know, all the time and that's not really how you're supposed to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I mean, for sure. That's uh, yeah. We got. I mean, yeah. So what? Um, oh, we got some more folks. Uh, always like to just acknowledge that people are jumping in. Good crowd tonight. Good crowd. Uh, John Rister, hey, and Gail, we'll pop back in. John has the Aspire Dagger set. Very nice. Guru David Hines. Uh, Guru, I'm glad you jumped in. Definitely getting you back on in your uh, collection there. Um, wow, good stuff. All right. Um, so let's, I, I guess, uh, well, before we go into the other countries, well, you know what, let's just touch on it, and then you know we, we can get to the show and tell. I mean, I, I mean, why not? But I do, I, I did get a question from, uh, and this is from Tuan Jack. Your sticks. So uh, what's, you know, without identifying the oil or what have you there, what's, um you know, what are you using? You know, how come they're uh, so well treated or durable? What's the, uh, what's the method? Well, back in the 70s, I used to own a business. Uh, actually, 70s in, starting going into the 80s. I owned a business called uh, Exotic Wood Creations. And um, I used to work with all kinds of exotic woods. I knew all about finishes and stuff like that. And, um... One day I just had the idea, this was, you know, this goes back to like 1990 or 91 that I did this. I started, mm -hmm. I was working then. And it's a five week process. Um, I, 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 I actually, I even experimented with one. I took a piece of rattan, threw it in oil. Um, and what I did was I took it out and uh, I broke it open after a couple of weeks and I noticed it wasn't soaked all the way through. So I, decided to do it at a five-week process and it does soak it all the way through 
um, then I, I I drain it out. Uh, it only takes like a day to drain some of it out, and then I seal the ends. Mm. And uh, this process makes the sticks last longer than all sticks. I got people that buy sticks for their whole school, actually, and uh, because they love them, you know. And, mm. and a lot of people say they last like up to a a, a year. Some people have said a couple years. Um, I've had sticks where they broke down in six months, but then I've had sticks that, uh, the ones in my bag, uh, are just starting to break down. Uh, well, no, one of them are and one of them is just starting to break down. I noticed there's a little crack in the, uh, the, the skin. Mm. And, uh, I think I've had that and I, you know, I teach Kali, you know, uh, you know, a few times a week, you know, every week. So, and it, la it they just last. It makes, it's, it's logical. If, you put oil on something, it's going to be more durable, you know, that's mm -hmm. all, you know, so it, it works. And, uh, it was a good idea at the time. And, you know, it still holds true. Even back then, before I had TFW, I used to have people that, you know, that maybe went to my seminars, bought sticks and, you know, they might've been from California or they might've been from, you know, Indiana or something like that. So once in a while, not often, you know, but once in a while, as soon as theirs broke down, they would order another pair of sticks or, you know, for a friend or something like that. You know, people also say that, you know, they break everybody else's sticks if they're at a seminar, they're breaking up their sticks. So, um, you know, of course, I was proud of that, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, um, whatever you're doing, I mean, it's obviously, I mean, making them more durable for sure. For sure. They're, they're they're give it some weight, too. That's another thing, mm -hmm. you know. I have the, the 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 sticks I call Malietna stick, and um, that's uh that just means you know smaller stick. It's a thinner the thin, stick. The thin, the thin stick. Yeah, and I oil those, and you know uh, people are saying those even outlast other people's sticks. Yeah. You know even when they use that, you know. So some people use those just to be, you know for demos uh, mostly, or or just you know uh, because they're small themselves, mm. you know, basically, you know. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, obviously, the it's good stuff. Uh, you know, when you're doing your uh, show and tell, I'll bring out. I have actually the thins, the regulars, and uh, and I'll, I'll bring. Them. Um. So, all right. So, okay. Obviously, you know, what year again? Just you know, I mean, roughly. What you know, or, or what was the inspiration for you to maybe think about weapons from other countries recreating? Uh, what, mm -hmm. brought that, what brought that on? The year I can't remember for That's some okay. reason. That's okay. Just I guess more uh, importantly, but, uh, the Kukri was the very first one. Okay. That okay. I got an um. I always wanted a Kukri. I have an antique, and um. Uh. Yeah, I have an antique that's downstairs hanging up. I should have brought that up. It's kind of cool. It's got to be a couple hundred years old, and uh. Mm -hmm. I just love the Kukri, and I wanted it, so I just wanted another one, and uh now we have one and <laughs> i just i feel like that's that's one killer blade talk about a go-to blade mm -hmm. you know um, i mean which is there's different ideas from different countries of buddhism um so uh like uh i guess this is supposed to kill in nepal they want to kill instantly without pain okay and yeah then um, um uh andrew D D giuseppe the wing chun instructor he says the Buddhism in uh, Chinese, China with uh, the butterfly sores was to cut off their hands and not kill them. And that's the idea. So you can see the two different thoughts ah, there. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. That doesn't sound Buddhism to me, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Wow, wow. So then, all right, so that was your first and all that. Um, you know, what about. Uh, you know, let's say Indonesia. I mean, what made you get some into the European um, stuff? Was it suggestive, or oh, was it somebody came up with an idea, or you? Just I, I, I wanted, I wanted longer swords. Uh, even when I went, like I said, I went to the arms museums and I saw a lot of different swords there, and there's a lot. You know, there's a lot of different ones, and uh, uh, so I saw a few different ones, and I, you know, I threw it at my buddy there, and uh, he. He had some uh, ideas and um, I, you know, I showed some pictures and things that I wanted and I, you know, I got specs and things like that. So uh, 
you know, we started making long swords. Uh, we have the, the claymore, um, which my God, that's a beast. Uh, yeah. I, you know, without armor on, I don't know how anybody could contend with that. You could, you could hack like probably five bodies at once with that damn thing. You know, um, it, that'd be a hopeless situation for somebody. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, uh, the, the, uh, Bill Wallace sword, um, that's, uh, the Braveheart sword. That's, uh, uh that's, it's hard because, uh, we, what we did was we got what it was in the area, what we think was Bill Wallace's sword. There is, mm. there's, there's, nobody really knows what it is. Um, uh, that for, you know, cause there's no real copy of it. There's people that say they have it, but, um, but, um, it looks like, you know, what, you know, through word of uh, mouth, you know, that's what it looks like. Um, so we got that, we got the archer sword, uh, when they ran out of arrows that when they, then they went in there and they charged with, the uh, the, you know, the, uh, sword, they were more well-versed with the, the bow, uh, but, the uh, the sword, of course, you, everybody had to learn how to use a sword back then, you know, wow. um, we got the Indonesian karambit, which I have one of those right here too. This right here. Well, let me see. Okay. Right there. Yeah. And, uh, could you see it? Yes. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, and uh, this right here was uh, um, Herman Sawanda. Um, he's the one with the design. He actually gave me one many years ago, and uh, I, I, I just love it. You know, it was a cheaper steel, but uh, I, you know, I really liked it. And yeah. uh, so I, I, I said, well, I'll have this particular one, you know, and uh, so we got that. Um, I'm trying to think of other, uh, the, oh, we have the, the, the Celtic sword. Um, right, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, and then we had uh, the Roman Gladius, you yeah, know. That would uh, be the one I would get outside of FMA. The Roman Gladius, that looks pretty, uh, I, yeah, just, I just yeah. know from Roman history, I've always been fascinated with that because the way they used it behind the shield from the, bar, from the Goths and all that who had the longer blades, they were basically getting jammed up and, here comes the shield. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just yeah, like um, that would be the one. Like, I, I think that's neat that you um, you did that. I mean, so were some of these suggestions, or you just you kind of just wanted to just branch out? I mean, I wanted to branch out. That's that's yeah. why we can, we changed the name to TFW. Yeah, it's, a lot of people still call it traditional Filipino weapons, which I don't care. You know, it doesn't yeah, yeah, matter. I, I, I'm guilty. Um, it is what it is because we started off probably the first 10 years with, you know, TFW. I mean, excuse me, traditional Filipino weapons. And uh, when I branched out, I said, man, I got to people aren't coming to my site and buying these other ones because they think we're only, t uh, you know, Filipino weapons. Mm. And uh, it seemed like I, I'm not sure I guess the name helped you know, uh, calling a TFW because now people look on the site for all types of blades, you know, uh, the, the, the Claymore, believe it or not, I mean, geez, they're like 800 and something dollars. And, uh, the, so is the, the, uh, the other one, people buy those. I can't even believe it. I got two left of the Claymore and I sold all of the, the Braveheart. People like those. Um, I think, I oh, yeah, I'm sure, it's, it's, I'm sure it's cinematic. <laughs> The movie, you know what I mean? Yeah, that yeah. kind of helped you. I mean, um, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We got a guru. We got a couple questions here. Oh, Master Graciela, uh, right there. So she's okay. She's got a question. Have you ever worked with zebra wood? It was. Uh, I was given a set made of this wood. There, zebra wood. I've uh, never even heard of zebra wood. I, I, I'll tell you, I'm curious though, if she could send me, yeah, uh, yeah. inbox me a picture of it. I, you know, I'm really curious. I'd like to look it up. Actually, huh. is that from I'm, the Philippines? Or I don't know, but I'm interviewing her next week. And so what we'll do is we'll have to have her, we'll have to have to show those live. That's all. Um, and also, Elric. In TFW advertising, it mentioned dead blades that were brought back. Which of your Philippine blades were no longer being made? Oh, none of them are not being made. Oh, you mean in the Philippines? Is that what he means? Uh, uh, um, the, the common designs in the Philippines now, uh, I mean, 
there's guns, there's, you know, civilization, <laughs> you know, people don't walk around with, uh, a lot of the blades that are, you know, that were out at one time. Uh, you mostly see like designs like the Golak or the, the Panute design, Itak Tagalog design, um, because, you know, people that are farming use those. That, mm -hmm. That's always used, you know. So um, a lot of those uh, blades just aren't in existence anymore. They're not being made. A lot of them that we found were from uh, elders that uh, – um that were that had blades or something like that mm. we you know we get it uh copy it and then bring it back to them you know so it's it's really hard to find these designs if you're not you know getting it from the elders that are still living mm. that got it handed down in their families or museum pieces that you know they were lucky enough to get some you know uh, I, I went to a museum in manila um and they had my god you got to see the room full of all different blades i wasn't allowed to take any pictures uh in fact i got yelled at because i did take some and uh you know we, we try to sneak it but once you get yelled at you don't sneak it anymore <laughs> no before you run the risk of getting kicked out you know? yeah yeah so uh i mean i i, I was in my glory i couldn't even believe it and this, yeah, this display was on tour yeah. um i guess so and i'm not sure if it was from spain i can't remember mm -hmm. but this this it wasn't even there that long i guess it was uh to be there for that month and i just was lucky enough to see it you know uh wow, it, wow i'll tell you i never seen so many <laughs> no i'm not sure that that experience alone that must have been yeah i just uh wow, wow amazing um yeah none of those are in existence anymore you don't see them around um mm -hmm. when i was in uh, Paquit, uh, I did see somebody with a Chris sword, uh, which I was kind of surprised. Mm -hmm. And, um, that was it, uh, that I've seen that anybody even had a Chris and I'm, uh, you know, what I'm told that, you know, the Chris is still down there. I mean, you know, there's still people that practice uh, certain Kuntao style still in the, oh, no, in the, in the Mindanao, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, with the Moro and the mother, and we got, man, we're getting hammered with questions. Uh, Gracias. Uh, great. I'm looking forward to that, uh, uh, Master Gracia, next week, Monday. Okay. Franz Judas, how do you ensure that your swords accurately are made to the qualifications of specific uh, anthro linguistic groups given to your uh, bladesmiths may or may not be from the same ethnic linguistic group of the blades they're making wow. well i got an idea what he's saying um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing about swords um like we'll take the pira okay for example i've seen the pira look different ways in fact if you look it up you'll see it right in images uh the pira will sometimes look with a very long tail on it that's supposed to represent the cockatoo by the way you know uh, okay. that's, the cockatoo is thought of it because it's so intelligent and is thought of as uh, you know uh, a spiritual, powerful animal. You know, mm -hmm. so but a lot of the uh, the tops of the swords actually represent cockatoo. There's a there's a lot of them that represent that some dragon or whatever. But you know, there's a lot of that. That's that's uh, how you determine you know the 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 way they were made at one time. Um, but I, I think it comes down to artist depiction because not one person makes everybody's pira, for example. You know, yeah, yeah. so somebody else makes it. He might put a longer tail on the on the end of it. Uh, the blade might be an inch shorter, uh, might be an inch longer. Things like mm -hmm. that. So there is no definite uh, on on any Filipino blades. Uh, you know, as far as actual look they all kind you can see it by the look uh, let me reward that you see the actual look of it but there'll be something different artist depiction i always call it you know mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a yeah. lot of people <laughs> uh, that have you know they're telling me oh that's not uh, a pair or that's not a whatever cam bantuli or whatever it is i you know i mentioned mm -hmm. um and i'm showing off and 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 the thing is you can't say that because somebody else you know, if you have a hundred different makers, believe me, it's going to look a hundred different ways, subtly different, not completely. Like I said, the the, the main 
uh, look will still be within the, the, the style of the blade. That goes for European blades too. I've seen claymores that um, the, sometimes the, 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 the uh, guard, uh, let me get on the picture, slants out like this. I suppose they're going to trade they're it they're off. Right out like that, yes. So yeah. it's like that's another one. You know, even in Europe, and there's people that will argue that will say, no, that's not it. But people tend to judge by the, the what their teacher has or what they saw first. Or what they were exposed to. Yes, yeah, yes. Know, Whatever they were yeah. exposed to first, yeah. Yeah. they think yeah. that's the real one. And then you get, you know, you, people will say, well, that's not real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, and whereas they – yeah, and sometimes it comes down to subjective and emotional attachments to stuff. You know, like you said, maybe that's what the first one they're exposed to and all that, but without really having anything concrete as far as evidence and what have you. But I think we got some answers on the zebra wood here. Uh, is used to describe several tree species and the wood derived from zebra wood. That's what saying, huh, okay, and then Central America. Brian Rodriguez, uh -huh. zebra wood is an African wood, very exotic. Brian is correct. There is a species of it, zebra wood. Okay, so at West Africa. Yeah, um, I said at first Africa. I thought yeah, so Gabon and Cameroon. Huh, interesting. But at least we uh, at least we found out. Um, I'm curious about it. I'd like to see it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you what. I, I mean, she's um, she's coming on a show, I believe, Monday night. So I'll have to send her a message to make sure uh, she um, she uh, shows it. Mind. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll check it out. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm curious as well. Um, so just <coughs> with res before we get to the show and all that, the, uh, all that with, um, with respect to three, you know, regions in, in, um, in the Philippines, you know, Luzon, the Negros area, and then obviously uh, Southern Philippines, what would you say are your best? I mean, just generally speaking, you know what I mean? Like give us your sword, your most popular sword sold from each region and, Second part of my question is, what region do you get sales from the most? Okay, um, it seems like uh, what they're calling the moral swords are the most popular because those represent the Philippines, like the Campilan, the Chris sword. Uh, those are the swords that represent the, uh, the Philippines the most. I think that's like if you look on your shirt, I think that's the design, if I'm not mistaken. Is it the Chris and the Campilan? It is actually. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I thought. So yeah. that design, um, you know, is because that's what represents it. So I kind of kept it that way, mm. you know. Um, so uh, I think that's because of that they're the most popular. The ones of the north probably sell the least, but people are just discovering it through the TFW website. You know, it's like the Zanzibar, the the, uh, the, uh, the the northern Sanzibars, which. Yeah. another controversial item um and uh I'm trying to think what else the ceremonial knives although mm. the ceremonial knives sell because they look nice so that they sell the fastest but uh those seem to be the ones that um you know uh, are just starting to get discovered the visayan mm. ones uh, they sell because the panute is a very popular one so that goes and yeah the um, of course yeah, yeah, and the Ganunting, I mean, yeah, that's the biggest seller, and that's from the Visayan region. The Hagibis, yeah, yeah. uh, uh, th that's, uh, man, that sells fast, too. That's mm. another one. That's from the Visayan region, you know. I mean, I can see why. I mean, look at it. I mean, that's a killer mm. blade, literally. What about the, um, <laughs> what about the other uh, PTK blade that's used? And the name is escaping me. Now, I just talked about it the other day, and I can't believe I'm uh, uh, Okay. Which which one? Oh my gosh! Starts with a T, I believe. I can't believe I'm not remembering this. Talibong. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Talibong. Yes. Yes. That one sells very very fast. As soon okay. as I get it in, it sells. Uh, so that's another one. Um, that's very popular. Mm. Uh, the the uh, the Visayan Barong is another one that's mm. part of the uh, PTK system, but I never see anybody use it. I like it though. Um, I've never it's seen not used like the uh, other barong. It's used like in, uh, in like we do in, in PTK. You know. Okay. Okay. What um? Yeah. What about the um? Uh, sands like the uh, not the northern sands bar, the sands bar in general. Oh, I, I the would... sands bar sell the 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 smooth and lakey sands bars. They sell uh, very well. Uh, I notice a lot of people are in Dusai Pars uh, and. Uh, 
they're the ones that buy up a lot of the Sansa bars, you KI. know? Yeah, yeah. KI is uh, the Sansa bar and KI. That's a, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. So they, they tend to uh, uh, buy them up a lot, I notice. And and now they're, uh, you know, people that want a longer sword and they're light, they're fast. Mm. Um, I know when I whip that thing around, that man, I, I'll tell you, I feel like, wow, this thing. <laughs> that's, you know, my, that's my next one. Fast. I want to get a Sansa, <laughs> I want to get a Sansa bar. That's kind of like my next. Uh, Brian Rodriguez on here was so kind enough to make me a trainer. Um, so yeah, oh, I saw those. Yeah, look nice. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He's he's got a like a part time gig there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, we got a comment from here, which lead, which I think is actually substantiating what you mentioned before. European swords, in particular, had a lot. Uh, veritability. The bastard sword is so called because it's a bastardization of the variety of common designs during the Middle Ages. Usually the categories are defined by very general features, double edge, one hand, etc. So I think he's, he's pretty much instantiating what you said. I mean, there's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there were variations. I mean, I mean yeah. Right. yeah. So, and, and, you know, like I said, people argue, but, you know, the thing is, it's like, you know, the, the you know, it's what they were exposed to and they believe that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, yeah. they get an attachment and, yeah. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, they're not, yeah, yeah. They're just not going to open their minds and research, too. You know, that's the thing. I mean, the thing is with these, uh, these sores, what it did for me. I mean, number one, I got some uh, good friends in the Philippines that are uh, that are historians, uh, also very well educated, more educated than I am. I'll tell you that much. And I learned a lot from them, of course. And uh, uh, one of the things I did research every time I got a new one, um, I I would sit there and research the hell out of it, whether it was European sword, the Kupri or uh, Karamba, whatever. And I, I'll tell you, I'm becoming like this historian now i feel like you know yeah, uh, it's, fun. It's, it's amazing yeah. you know having all these different ones and you know to see what was going on with them mm -hmm. you know it was very dangerous times in the past over a uh, hundred years ago uh whether it was the united states or whether it was uh you know uh, south america africa everybody was walking around with a blade our very existence is because of the no blade. no 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 yeah i mean i mean if you look at i mean the american indians you know? Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, if you look at every continent, every country, you're gonna find Central America machete. I mean, yeah, it's yes, uh, yes. The, the yeah, Spanish yeah. Put the, the machete around uh, yeah. wherever they they took over or yeah. occupied. They uh, they basically um, spread that that look yeah. around. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, whether but, they uh, started, everybody needed. You know, I I always say this: if you bring a blade to a strip joint, right? And uh, you, 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 everybody will surround you and look at that if it's a nice looking blade, and mm. nobody will be looking at the girls <laughs> because it's 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 something fascinating about a blade. No, no, people are either like, "Whoa, that's scary! Get that away from me!" or well, they're, they're like, generally oh, treat. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. it's embedded in our DNA. <laughs> yeah. No, so much you said that, and I, I totally agree with you. Like, uh, you know, Tom Sotis. Um, says so, so something like that about it's in it's in our dna and uh and i you know at first you know i was like no nah, i don't, I don't want to say i you know i was more like just like wow you know like making me really think about it but to kind of parallel what you're saying yeah i yeah, think there's yeah. some truth to that <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. we needed it for everything to, yeah. to skin our uh, you know the food to, yeah. for self-defense to, to, to create uh shelter yeah. Um, to, to create any kind of clothing that we needed, yeah, you know, I mean, it was just used for everything. Absolutely, you know? absolutely, yeah, yeah. We got another question here. This is going very well. Can you share who your historical resource people are for confirming Philippine sword information? Um, some people, I'm guessing, you can't. Which is fine. You can't mention their name. So what? Yeah. Well, I mean, I do. I do have some friends uh, that mm -hmm. I I could reveal. Like, uh, uh, I mean, Felipe Giacano is one. Um, you know, I I uh, Very I good. got a three hour on my downstairs computer. I got a three hour interview that I did with him. My wife was nice enough to sit there with the camera while 
Uh, we went to uh, dinner uh, at his the college that he works at and yeah. things like that. And I had questions, believe me, especially right. on Kuntao. Yeah, he's uh, a you know, there's fault. so much on Kuntao that's false also, mm. that's information. I even see it on people's websites, it's false, you know. Mm. Um, and uh, I mean, about the, you know, the word Kali to different blades and I mean, everything. So yeah. it's, uh, one, uh, Mumbaki is another one that I, I got, you know, he's a, a friend of mine for, you know, he's, he's a big historian uh, on, uh, you know, on blades, you know, and he's a good friend of mine. Um, you know, there's a few others that I've talked to over the Alaric years. on here. Alaric very, it's done a lot of research in history. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, a lot of times the instructors, uh, they teach you what they learn from their teacher and there's Filipino pride going on there. So uh, it might be off a little bit or exaggerated. I'm not putting anybody down, but yeah, like yeah, when yeah. Anastanto wrote his first book, there was a few things that were off in the first book. And he knows that, you know, um, mm -hmm. he's right now uh, probably researched and, you know, he's probably one of the most intelligent people historically as far as, you know, bladed weapons go now, you know what I mean? Even far beyond what he was when that book came out and, what 71 you know mm. so you know that you know that that's that's a big difference so uh it's it's you know it is it's a different it's a difficult subject if people listen just to their teachers you know that's the thing so that's why i did so much research you know a lot of my research was on the web too and sometimes it contradicted one one website would contradict another website yeah. too, you know, a little bit you know but uh i i find uh, when it comes to that, you got to compare and come to a conclusion. Sometimes mm. uh, there is a lot of lost uh, information too. And there's, uh, I have some blades. Uh, I got empty spots on my website where it says this one's just, you know, this this size and this one's fast and it's, it feels good. And I don't know any information on. It. I can't find it. <laughs> yeah. You know. So there's some things that I don't know about. You know. So it's it's just you know they're they're dead. No, you know, uh, they haven't been around. Maybe who knows? Maybe four hundred years, maybe two hundred years. I don't know. You know, and you know, with Spanish occupation, uh, you know, it it, it just it, they were only allowed to carry those Panute Lucan blades. You know, I guess in Manila area anyway. You know, so uh, you know, a lot of that information got lost. You know. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, uh, you know, overall, I mean, you're you're just trying to give people who who have an opportunity to basically get swords from a from a martial art they happen to really like that in normal circumstances they wouldn't be able to or they would have to pay big money for an antique you, you know what i mean so yeah yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I don't know i mean that's you know yeah uh um, there's a lot of antiques on online i know it's like uh on um ebay I've tried to do it. I can't, I can never get them. I, people find them in their grandfather's garage. They don't yeah. know what it is and they'll sell like five of them for 40 bucks. And you know, I, I, I keep going up a dollar. Somebody else is trying to go up a dollar and you know, then by the time I think I won and then all of a sudden they did it last second. I guess there's programs I was told that <laughs> you could get that. Called, people could I, I'll bid you by a dollar, you know, <laughs> it's called sniping. They used to call it sniping. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They would come like in the last whatever, and you, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've given sure. up on that now, so I don't even yeah. try anymore. Yeah. I, mean, I, I mean, I got a lot of antiques that friends of mine there give me because of what I'm, you know, they, they, yeah, right? Because of what you're doing, doing. doing here and whatnot. So, I mean, I, I've got a load of antiques. <laughs> you saw them hanging over my. Uh, yeah, yeah, wall. yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, yeah, yeah. I took yeah. them all home. You know, <laughs> incredible, incredible. But here, I'm gonna go grab. The, some of the stuff that maybe people haven't seen as far as the six go and the course and all that. Do you want to, you want to give you want to start the, um, the show? Like what you got? Okay, I can do that. Yes. Yes. I can and do just, that. Um, you know, and I would just come, I'm going to be right back. It's not like I'm going to be going for five minutes. I mean, I'm just, I just got to hop over to the next room, but I would basically, whatever you want to share and present, bring it up here and let's, let's talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess show the different uh, versions of, uh, um, you know, different uh, different blades I have. I could do that. Yeah, definitely. Okay. All right. Let me just grab. 
just so people could see, um, I think you can see all the different blades here. Uh, not all of them, but a lot of them were over there. But I'll, I'll get more so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, and all right, let me fix this thing. Okay, and this light is kind of bright, huh? Maybe if I do this, that help? Uh, maybe here yeah, a little bit. Okay, all right. Well, to start off with, this is our new carrying bag. And you can see it's full. <laughs> I got all my stuff in there. And for teaching purposes, um, for, you know, whether it's seminars or for my class, I could go right in here and get examples of either live blades, training blades, sticks, everything. So, you know, this thing's very convenient. So uh, we do have those on the website also. Uh, Bowie knife. If you guys haven't seen it, uh, I'd like to tell you guys about the Bowie knife. If you notice, there's a gun handle here, shaped handle. Um, it's rumored, I'm not really sure if this is true. I guess uh, Jim Bowie had a Filipino wife, and uh, I guess this was a design supposedly off of one of his blades. Um, one of her blades or something like that that she brought over and a lot of Bowie knives are actually straight handled and this is supposed to be uh, the true design of the Bowie knife uh, now this is another one of those knives that they don't have a picture of anywhere uh, they have uh, basically it's through word of mouth and what a lot of what Jim Bowie's brother was saying so it's supposed to be a huge blade. Um, so there's a lot of Bowies that are modern that, you know, Bowie designed that are smaller, nothing wrong with them. I, I have a few of those myself also. Uh, but uh, the, the handguard is supposed to be, but this is what they they say the handguard is supposed to look like. And like I said, that, uh, that, that gun-shaped handle here, this is what they're supposed to look like. Uh, but like I said, that's through word of mouth. Also, there's no, historical version of the Bowie knife, unless they dig one up somewhere that will, uh, you know, to, to, to prove that. But I'm going on what I read. So that's one thing, okay. Uh, this ironwood Giho stick, mm. um, you notice the, the, the hexagon shape here and uh, the idea of this was actually break bones. This was, uh, when they're round, that's more for tourists. You see, Kamagong, I would not hit anybody with Kamagong or use Kamagong in a class. That You'll get a piece that'll break right off and hit somebody in the face or in the eye or something like that. Uh, I wouldn't even practice with this, actually, because it won't break off, because this is what they call moderately hard. Like uh, uh, Kamagong wood, there's a few other uh, types of wood uh, also that are, are overly hard and they're brittle. But this particular design is made for combat, made to break bones, made to break whatever it hits. I do have a video, if you look up on YouTube, uh, the Giho, where I take two pieces uh, of Kamagong that are almost as fat as this, and I break two of them like nothing and the pieces shatter all over the place. Hmm. I think that's proof that you don't want to use Kamagong uh, in battle or in, uh, um, you know, in, in a fight. Uh, but this, this type of wood I found really works nice. We used to have Malave, but I, I actually like this one better. Um, I'm, I'm really happy with Giho wood. Like I said, it's moderate hard. Uh, moderate, in other words, um, it, it, it's... it's uh, still it still retains dense, it's like a heavy dense wood mm -hmm. you know basically hey ron yeah yeah just where where's that wood where did you find that wood again uh actually at one time only a few islands in the philippines i guess had it but now people mm -hmm. are, are growing it elsewhere uh mm -hmm. just because um you know it's, it's used for various different things that 
uh, you know how our Cypress and here in the United States, they used to use that as gutters and stuff like that. They, they want waterproof wood. Um, I saw in a museum that I, I went to a lot of museums in the Philippines, by the way. <laughs> so in the uh, in one of the museums, they actually had the base of a ship that was made from giho wood. Oh wow! Um, still almost intact. I, I, I maybe the museum put some pieces back together, but mm. I'll tell you, I was so fascinated at that that they used to you know they used to make that uh, the ships out of uh, a giho wood. Yeah. It wasn't a long ship. I'd say maybe 25 feet or something like that, you know, so, um, you know, it, it looked like it was, you know, it was deep and it looks like, you know, they did a lot of traveling, you know, at one time. So mm. um, and I, I was supposedly that was, if I'm not mistaken, like 900 years old or something like that, too. Wow. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I just I got pictures of it. I got a look it up because I know there's a, a, the information on the card. I always yeah, get the, yeah, yeah. the card when I, when I do that. Um, just folks are watching. Here's the handle of what he just showed there. Pretty, pretty neat. Oh, that's the Gigo? Yeah. Yeah. I was just showing him the handle. <laughs> oh yes. Yes. The handle's nice. Oh yeah. I, I didn't even talk about the handle much, but you could see the point on it. Yeah, uh, no, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and um, I mean, of course, you could, you know, you hit, you you come in like that. I mean, that's going to yeah. be a nice little hit if you're in fighting, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice. Um, this, uh, the pakal knife. We actually have three different uh, sizes of pakal knife. Two of them are legal in most states. One of them will be legal in all states because it's only like three and a half inches. Okay, yeah. So a lot of states allow at least three and a half inches. I think, well, maybe not in New York. I don't know. I got I to look at it. I think, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, that's hard to tell. We started making Kydex sheets, even for the Karambits, and because a lot of people, I was selling these things basically thinking collectors are going to buy them, but mm. uh, then everybody wanted to carry around the Bacall knives and the Karambits. So I said, well, if they want to carry them, we don't, uh, for, for these kind of sheaths, we don't wear the old clothing that they wore at one time in the Philippines where you could stick it in a scarf or something like that. Mm. So um, I, 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 we, we started uh, making the Kydex sheets now and and it works out nice. And you know, if you can see it fits nicely in there and comes out and it snaps in but this these are nice knives actually uh, uh they mm -hmm. feel comfortable in both grips they're called pakal knives because of this position for people that don't know book pakal but um the blade is facing outward um which is the opposite because the kuntal method the blade faces inward for my style anyway mm -hmm. and uh, i guess for the uh a, a lot of other styles the blade faces outward so when you snatch you you, you cut the throat or something like that mm -hmm. You could parry with the the knife. Uh, it feels really comfortable in for call position. Um, I find that a lot of knives are uh, are not too comfortable in for call position and saxa or or standard position. You know, so I I find that a lot. So this this I, I was amazed at, uh, to to see these kind of blades. You know, these are nice designs. These are uh, the design of the uh, of the far northern areas of the Philippines, you know, this is I, I like them. I, I I should have brought them all out, but they're that's all right. As long as they can just get an no, idea. Too many, like I said. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this uh, the Gayang is uh, it's an offshoot, of supposedly a cousin to the the Campi line. Um, <laughs> It's, it's I've seen different versions of this too online too, but pretty much they look like this um, uh, So it's got that Almost the jawbone shape in the front there as you oh, okay. can see It's got a nice uh, butt end to it where it's full tang uh, This is a nice a nice feeling blade you hit something with this man. I'll tell you it's 
you're gonna do them in nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, oh, I said something. I didn't say someone. I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but this uh, this one's an old one. This is one of the first ones that we we had made. Um, because I kept this. Geez, probably this. I'll bet you this was made in 2004, 2005. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, uh, Me? I act like that's old, you know. <laughs> 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 this is another one that's not too well known um you can see this is the galak the sheath is fascinating in itself if everybody could see you know the sheath here and uh what happens is uh this this shape you would think this is uh uh spanish influence but it's not um, this this one um, obviously a hacker. Uh, this is supposed to come from Indonesia, where the people of the far northern area are originally from Indonesia, where they okay. bought a ship that went to the top of the Philippines, and uh, the, the wind actually excuse me the wind brought them to the top of the Philippines. Okay. And so this is supposed to be an Indonesian influence actually. And they adapt it, so you know, used it was used in battles, obviously. But nowadays, a, a design like this would be used more for uh, for um, uh, farming and stuff like that. Mm. Perfect for farming because it's it's definitely a hacker, and you could cut trees down with this very nicely. It's in fact, uh, Ramel uh, was over here one time, and I had I live on a lake, so the the trees fell down, and um, my son Jesse had learned how to use a sword through Ramel on the trees. So we had to cut all the branches off and then cut the trees back so the everything fell back in place and you know wouldn't be so swampy in that area, you know. So, and we were cutting everything. I was cutting the trees with a, a chainsaw and he was cutting the branches off. He learned with uh, the Golak. I wish I filmed it because it was kind of a, a moment, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> But he, the, Ramel stayed here for a couple of weeks one time. We, we, I brought him fishing and everything. You know, it was, it was kind of a lot of fun. Did some training, of course. <laughs> but yeah, this night, this sword is really nice. I, I like the, the design. This is from the Visayan region. This one, uh, one of the knives of the uh, Bikini Terja Kali system. Um, I saw Leo Gajes and I had to have one. When I felt his, his was, he said, his grandfather's, okay. which it did look real old, look like uh, probably, I don't know, it had to be look like over 100 years old. Mm. The thing was beautiful. And uh, I took pictures of it and I had to have one, measured it, everything. And so I had one made and now we sell it on TFW. I love this knife. What's it called? Uh, the Hagibis. Okay. 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 Yeah, you mentioned that before. Okay. Okay. Yes, that's a. a, a um, you can see the handle is very comfortable. Um, doesn't feel good in bacall position, but it feels good in a standard position. You know, <laughs> it's it's just uh, you 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 can see the you could go between the ribs with this thing. You know, it's so so thin. You can see. You know? <laughs> Hypothetically speaking, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, wrong side. Okay. This is the Spotty Daga set. Beautiful. Um, the dagger is quite long. Like 15 inches, right? Oh. And uh, the, sh the shape, the handle is all Kamagong, uh, rattan wrap on the top here. Uh, this is a nice set here. I mean, yeah. it, it feels really nice where, you know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, just utilizing it here and coming in. And I mean, it's, it's just, it's really nice. The, uh, the I was taught by Dan Anasanto that uh, the training is done with because this is like a 16 inch blade if I'm not mistaken right, yeah. and um, he told me that they use an 8 inch blade to practice so they can mm -hmm. reach the target 
So when they use the real one, the, uh, it inserts deeper. Okay. I find that fascinating. So, <laughs> hmm. no, but uh, again, I like this thing. We we have the the Spotty Dogger train. Uh, Spotty Dogger trainers also. It's not an eight inch blade though. We uh we use uh the same length as this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have that. And yeah. That excellent, excellent training set. Yeah, so, yeah. You well, know. this this set. I'll tell you, it's, 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 you know, you can see, I, I feel good. What's just really weird is my left hand, um, unless I injure my right arm, I don't use my left hand that much, but when I, uh, I have a, a, a knife in my other hand, my left hand, I feel really good with it, you know, or if I have two blades or two sticks, I, I just feel really good with it, two knives, you know, but I feel weird with my left hand just fighting with my left hand, you know, something awkward about the feeling of it, you know? It's a beautiful <laughs> set. And we have the Sanduko Idaga. Also here, this is uh, my sheaths here too. Uh, they all have a, a clip on them too. Um, yeah. to traditionally, what I'm told, the Sanduko Idaga didn't have a, a clip, but then people started writing me said, oh, I want the clip. And so I, well, I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh, okay yeah, yeah. 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 So that was another thing. So we ended up uh, putting it on. Uh, but this is the, it's a much shorter blade. Um, let me get this. It's much shorter as you can see than the one. Oh, then the uh, spotty. spotty see, yeah. you know, but it's, again, uh, this seems to be one of the top sellers for go-to blades. Mm. You know, uh, you can wear both. I mean, you know, the thing is, but this this one, it just seems to be, but this, uh, the, the Sanduco, I'll tell you, it just feels like it's going to do the job for you, you know. And, you know, like I said, it's a shorter blade. You can still come in with it. It feels nice, yeah. you know. Uh, but this, uh, the Sanduco by itself, uh, easily you could probably cut a tree down um this thing is something else man I, I, i'll tell you i was so fascinated when i first saw it and i still am <laughs> and that was almost yeah, 20 years ago yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, they're really nice yeah, yeah yeah they are they're they're fantastic uh feeling blades they're more common in the northern part so it's not well known nobody's ever heard of sanduko Idaga unless they come from that area you know mm -hmm. that's the thing <clears throat> uh i only brought two of the ceremonial knives but that's all right ceremonial See. knives uh i have the originals oh god i should have brought them i got old rusty originals downstairs and uh this one was used to hunt the enemy or a criminal and this one was used to cut his head off. <laughs> so they're called ceremonial because, you know, they, they would do a big ceremony before. A, a lot of times, especially ancient peoples, always did uh, a ceremony before they, they did something, you know, either hunting or, or uh, going to war. Um, you know, they're not the only, the Filipinos weren't the only ones that did that, you know. Um, that was kind of common uh, place, you know, in a lot of different cultures back then. But, um, I mean, how they cut the head off, I don't know if they did it fast or if they did it slow, but oh. you can see by the length of it, you could definitely, you know, uh, cut it off easy. And these are razor yeah. sharp. Um, a lot of people buy them. They're, I mean, obviously, they're not cutting heads off, but a lot of people uh, buy these, uh, especially this one is the top seller. Oh. Uh, I think this is number one, if I'm not mistaken, and I think... I can't remember if this number, this number three, I think this one, I didn't bring down number two, the one with the ring in the back, but I think people just like this because you could use this for anything, hunting, fishing, yeah. uh, self defense or whatever, you know, it's just a, a great carrying knife, you know, it just feels uh, excellent too, you know, so that's, I think that's why that one sells so fast. As soon as I get these, the number one in, it just, they just sell, huh. it's amazing.
This was our first non-Filipino blade. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, when I cut that tree down that day, I was so amazed. Uh, I, I'm, I, I'm not sure. It's on video. I can't remember if I did five or seven hacks, and it was a decent-sized tree, you know, not a real big one, but, uh, you know, decent size. Yeah. And I was thinking to myself, wow, this thing <laughs> could cause some damage. So I could see why, you know, even in Burma, whatever Burma is called nowadays, um, you know, they, they, the, the military use those out there. Right. Uh, I think in Nepal now, the, the, the military there, uh, you know, uses them. And there's some other people that use them too. I guess in Northern India, they, they use them, mm. you know, uh, but this thing, man, I'll tell you, just kind of coming down with it and you could see, uh, um, I would think it would be used like the Igorot head hunting axe where, um, they're, they're probably not cocking it back so much because of the, the, with the shape of the blade. I'm thinking they cut down with it oh, okay. just because of the shape of the blade. But you can see the point of it is in one, uh, can you see it? Okay. The, the point oh, yeah, of it oh, yeah. is in line with the, with the handle. So you could still thrust with this. Yeah. Thing. I see that. Right. Okay. Even yeah. Though. So um this this is you know an mf -er of a weapon <laughs> you, you know, it, uh, i'm very fascinated with the cooper yeah. anyway there's bigger ones and there's smaller ones i notice you know um yeah. i've only handled this one and the one i have downstairs is uh slightly smaller than this one slightly you know the uh, yeah. but it's a fascinating weapon i've been dying to learn the Kukri for a long time just to, yeah. to get the system of it, you know, and every time Dr. Gee came around, I, I, I was, uh, yeah, was, he's, uh, you, know, you know, that's the thing between Jesse's fights and, uh, you know, or seeing, you know, somebody else, you know, Leo guy here, Dan and Santo or somebody he's like, you know, yeah. These are, Another two great sellers. These are the uh, the two different Itak Tagalog. Um, okay, the Itak. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. I think this is uh, number two, uh, Itak Tagalog number two. Uh, this is probably the uh, uh, one of the hottest sellers. You know, um, this is in the northern regions. Uh, uh, north. And so I, now I'm mixed up. If one, one of them's from the East Coast and one's from the West Coast in the Northern region. Northern and I can't remember which is which. You think I would know that, but uh, brain freeze. <laughs> right. but it, 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 it's, it's another one that feels really good. Uh, nowadays, they would use this design again for, for farming. You know, I'm sure, you know, once in a while you hear other things, but <laughs> but in battles, I could see this would definitely hack, uh, you know, a body. You know, this is oh, yeah. this looks, man. This this particular blade, thrusting, slashing, beautiful. Yeah. Then um, this is the Itak Tagalog number one, and looks very similar, but there's a subtle difference in it. The handle's a little bit different, you know, as you can see here, you know, okay. subtly different. But this is another one that sells. Kind of has a panute look to it, you know. Um, I'm not sure if this comes from a Spanish design. Um, I, who knows, you know, uh, yeah. and I notice a lot of swords, they look alike all around the world. So that's, you know, this particular design, you see a lot of places, you know. Mm. <laughs> Speaking of Panute, <laughs> Panute. Yeah, this one's one of my favorite uh, Again, that's full tang also, and uh, it looks like the Etak Tagalog shape, see? Uh, so this is uh, popular. Now, those are from the north. This is from the Visayan region. Mm. And again, this thing, you know, uh, it just it just feels so good. Yeah, uh, that's like one of my favorites. I just love this thing. It's got a great wow. feel. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's definitely it's kind of it's not sharp on the opposite side, but it's uh, concave, so you for easy insertion. You know, that's the idea when you see that design. If you can see that, I don't yeah. know if you could, 
on the top there, you know, it's, it gives that concave. So, uh, it'll fit in wherever you insert it, you know, <laughs> charming. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to sound evil here. You know, <laughs> I am talking about ancient times here. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> Now, most people know about the uh, spears from uh, from Mindanao. The northern spears aren't too well known, and uh, I'm not sure if this is uh, Igorot, but it does come from that area, and it might be um, a lot of times, you know, with the, of the shield, and this would be over the opening of the mm -hmm. shield, and they would just kind of thrust with it. And, uh, it's you know a throwing. I'm sure some were thrown. You know maybe yeah. in emergency purposes. Uh, this is mostly for fighting. Um, you know you you could see like you know you you parry a, a sword and then you you get in there and you yeah. you thrust. Uh, you know you could actually just kind of I don't want to hit my fan, but you could actually come around and slash at a longer range. Mm -hmm. than, you know than the sword could reach. So uh, basically the same principle as a staff. You know and we use our staffs for, for practice in the spear, of course, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 And it's kind of cool, um, you know, like how you determine where the edge is, uh, you would hold it where your finger, your, your knuckles here would be. So if I were, I'm going to go around the fan. I don't want to hit the ceiling fan, but you see the edge is coming over yeah. because of where my knuckles are. So you yeah. could slice, you know, you could slice a throat with this thing. You yeah. can't just haphazardly throw, you know, slice with it because you have to know where the edge is. And in combat, that's a kind of a different, uh, a difficult situation, mm. you know. But, you know, when, when you're going to parry and come in, you know, if as long as your knuckles are facing where the edge is, just like a sword, you could you, you could use the edge for fighting. It was yeah. mostly used for thrusting, but you can't slash with it also, you know. Right, right. Sometimes you could grab a, 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 a shield. Uh, you know, kind of step back and then thrust inward with it too, you know, so that was another, that's what, one of the uses of this hook edges. Uh, sometimes you'll see various different things like this on various different uh, uh, spears, so they could get by the shield, you know. Mm. And uh, I, I love I, I I love practicing the staff uh, and the spear. It, it's just yeah, it's it looks neat. Fun. Amazing. We spend so much time on that uh, at the school. <laughs> okay. I brought down two whoops, two of the uh the Sansa bars. And like I said, these are light and fast. Yeah. You can see if there's yeah. uh, there's just enough meat on it to make it so it, it's it's strong. This one's uh so just so happens to be double edge. And uh, what number this is, I can't tell. Somebody would have to look it up, and uh, you can see that that's the one with the uh, the full tang, the metal part on the end okay. here. And uh, but these are so fast, it's just unbelievable. You know, it's I, I like. I like this sword a lot, you know. Yeah. Um, it's you know you can't say it's not in my style. I mean, it's <laughs> you know, no, I don't really know. To adapt to, you know what I mean. But it's yeah. it feels really nice, you know. I like this the, the way this yeah. one is. My next you know, one. You, know, uh, you, you can see how when when you curve, though, you see how it curves upward, and mm. it's great for for thrusting upward too, whether under the ribs or under the chin, you know. If an opportunity arises, of course, you know. But I mean, you know, it's 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 just an amazing, amazing blade. And this is uh another one of the Sansa bars too. You can see there's a subtle difference in the in the shape. Each one has a, a subtle difference. Um, we have a lot of different Sansa bars right now, but uh, the, the we're supposed to get one more. Uh, one more different design in from uh, another area of the Philippines. We couldn't do it, of course, for 2020. Uh, this one's not sharp on the other end. This one is just concave for, uh, you know, for you see the edge here, uh, just for easy insertion, you know. And again, this one's also fast or all, you know, like you, you see, you know, they're, they're very fast. 
Um, and I, that's why I like the, the Sanzibars. I'll tell you, they must have been a son of a bitch to, to contend with <laughs> in a skilled hand, you know? Because mm. <laughs> you can't see this thing coming. Yeah, yeah. You know, because I, I, I see people that stick fight and they bash each other, you know, and, and you, you know how I complain about that a lot. And I see that and I say, give them these and watch how safe they are. Watch how safe they yeah. are. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, the, uh, the range becomes. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Here. And these are the northern Sanzibars. Um, you can see that has the, the northern swords have that kind of design, that open design in the sheets. If you could see it, Pretty okay, sure, right? Yes, you know. And uh, notice one has a handguard, one doesn't. So obviously, this one was probably the original design um uh through trade this was brought from cebu uh area to uh the northern area and they right. adapted to it it's a shorter blade um so they made it their own uh, so they're called northern sanzibars uh I, I catch all kinds of crap from people that say there's no such thing but i don't know like i said i you know my friends are they're historians so they can't argue yeah, right. with that you know um now the the spanish could not get up uh the the Igara territory because very mountainous they knew their territory um and uh they, they the spanish got their asses beat by the Igara and uh um, and the people of north in general and uh so i'm assuming they saw their blades laying around and picked mm. them up and said oh a handguard what an idea <laughs> yeah, where did it come from? There you right? go. You have the handguard that was probably just a later design, and I don't know the exact dates of it. Mm. But you know, you could punch with these handguards, and you know, obviously, you know, I've gotten, a, I've, done, I've done some full contact fighting, and you know, a lot of it, and I've gotten my fingertips hit, just my fingertips alone. This will mm. prevent. It. Imagine if it was, uh, uh, you know, if, if it was a, a, a without a handguard and it was a sword. Oh. Yeah. You know, I mean, you have no fingertips, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the handguard, you know, is, is an obvious good additive. But this one, you know, it's another one. It's light and it's fast and it's just, you know, mm. a nice blade, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Rob, we might have to do a part two. Um, we're just, we're going past an hour and a half. Oh, okay. Um, but what I'm thinking is, but it might be here. Here's here's a here's a potential plan of attack. I'm thinking. Uh, part two, and then we can kind of maybe go into like just on Kuntao and maybe the Barong and all that. I think because a couple people in the um, test run had mentioned about going into Kuntao. Oh, so, okay, I can do that. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking if we did a part two, we could we can cover Kuntao. The weapons of it, your experience with the tribes down there. I don't know. I think that would be a, like a. I think that'd be. A, I think that'd be a good one. Yeah, that sounds yeah. good. I mean, if you wanted me to show some technique or something, I think oh, uh, I the Royal name on there, I could probably do it with him. And yeah, uh, that's uh, that's another thing too. I'm thinking like def. I would definitely, definitely do demos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I could do that. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So people can actually see. I would. Yeah, I think people would really, really enjoy that. You know. Yeah, Kunta was my my baby. I I feel you know it's like uh um uh, now that you know I I hit sixty two and I just feel like uh you know all this grappling and <laughs> stuff mm -hmm. like that. I can't handle it anymore. My son yeah. can pick me up and spin me on his finger with grappling now. So, I mean, and plus my back, you know, is gone. So, yeah, I, know. I, I, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, That's I got fine. enough for self-defense. Believe me, I've been grappling, so, you know, 35 years or something like that. So, but, you know, it's like, uh, uh, it just seems like Filipino martial arts have the answers for self-defense for people mm -hmm. once they start getting of age, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, for sure. Yeah. I mean, we could, I just yeah, think that yeah. We could do that. Um, 
Yeah, we can do a part two, come down and all that. Just um but this has been yeah, I mean this has been great. And I really appreciate you coming on. Um and those well, are I appreciate you having me. This is fantastic. I mean, yeah. you know Oh my yeah. god, my uh my pleasure. And those who are watching are right, it's TFW. So the website is TFW.com. Am I no, correct? it's uh traditional Filipino weapons.com. Traditional and Filipino is spelled with uh, an F. <laughs> a lot of people get that mixed up. Yeah. So it's it's spelled with an F. Yeah. No. 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 Well, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I'll, yeah. Definitely. That. Those who you are want to check out his offerings, and all that. I highly recommend going to it. Um, so what I do is I download this, put it on YouTube, and then basically from YouTube, uh, you know, I'll definitely gonna put it on your wall and all that. Now, usually it takes me like, you know, like an hour. So I think, you know, like an hour from now, let's say. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll put it on your wall. You know, it'll be the YouTube version, you know. Okay. Um, yeah, that sounds good. I'm sure. And yeah. then what we do is after the holidays, I can kind of coordinate with you, like on a part two, just on Kuntau. Um, okay. That sounds good. Yeah. yeah. No, this one, I mean, this has been great. Um, I just know, like, for audience kind of feedback like if they go over an hour and a half and all that then it justifies like a part two <laughs> yeah i can't uh, even believe this has been an hour and a half i mean it's it's just like yeah, the it's just blew yeah. right by you know <laughs> yeah, no, 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 it's, it's it's been fantastic i mean the comments yeah, alone yeah. you know merit that so you know it's been absolutely and, wonderful I'd, I'd so, like to uh, say, if well, people want to go on my mailing list but just go on the home page i know i said this before uh, go on the home page and um, you scroll down until it says, uh, you know, the newsletter list. You'll see and you add your email and um, you'll know everything that's going on, like, uh, uh, you know, what's new um, and what's back in stock. And okay. when we start doing seminars again, I announce my seminars on there also. You know, okay. hopefully that that happens soon again. And, you know, I want to thank everybody for coming in. And, this freaking miserable mess. <laughs> I know, I know. You know, there's all opinions on it, and you know, I got mine too. But you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, but uh, crazy times. The Philippines are having a real bad mess out there with. Uh, yeah, no, I just talked to like when I talk to people out there, it's um, yeah. I mean, obviously, they're you know, they're uh, they're. Uh, they're going through their stuff, of course. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's broke right now because of uh, you know, like you can't work. I mean, that's crazy. And you know, economy no, like that. No, yeah. you know, I don't know what to say. You know. I know. It's. I. I just. I have empathy. Just for the. I. You know. I know. Extreme empathy for small businesses. People are suffering. You know. This. You know. In the third world countries. That. You know, yeah. It's just terrible. 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 You know, yeah. That's why. Yeah. And, you know, like. Yeah, you know, we really don't. We really, we really don't have that bad. You know what I mean? All things considered. <laughs> yeah, I know. When you, you got the kids coming in now. They're saying, "I'm from the ghetto, yo." Yeah, <laughs> they got free housing, free, yeah, free go food, and 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 money. Back. You know, <laughs> I've yeah, seen ghetto. Mm. Yeah, ghettos out there are completely yeah. different than what they're talking about here. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, terrible, terrible. Um, yeah, yeah. But, um, no, I want to appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. And um, if I don't talk to you, obviously have a good holiday. And when the holidays yeah, yeah. are over, yeah, have a great ho holiday and Merry Christmas, to everybody. Yeah. And um, uh, thank everybody for coming on here. And this yeah, is a ton great. of comments. Ton of comments. And then what we do is, uh, uh, like I said, after the holidays, I touch base with you for the part two. And um, as a matter of fact, I'm writing it down right now. On part two. <laughs> um, and now, yeah, we'll definitely get that going. So, but uh, yeah, how about be in touch and um, you know, stay safe and uh, you too. Yeah, the, um, through this, you'll you'll get some business. <laughs> yeah, you'll get yeah, some. that sounds good. Uh, thank you very much. This is great. <laughs> no, pleasure. Happy to do it. Happy to do it. I'm just it should have happened sooner, but we had some mixed messages going on, so no worries. Uh, yeah, better. yeah, no problem. Okay. You know. Yeah. <laughs> As they say, better late than never, right? Yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, you take care of yourself, and I'll be in touch. All right, you got it. Thank you very much. You absolutely, got it. absolutely. <laughs>
All right. Oh, yeah, that was great. So definitely get him on for part two. Next week, uh, before Christmas kicks in, on Saturday, it's supposed to be a collaboration of four guests. And I'll know that very shortly um, if that's going to occur. Then Monday, Master Graciela will be coming on. And uh, again, just uh, fascinating, you know, always happy to get female practitioners and teachers on here. So she'll be coming on Monday. And then Wednesday, before the holiday, I'm thinking Guru J. This is going to be um, on Sunny Umpot system. So some good stuff coming up. I figure I'll jam out a few before the uh, holiday. So hopefully I'll see you guys in, and uh, I'll be in touch. Uh, definitely uh, post on FMA discussion as far as the times and who's coming on and so forth. If you haven't, uh, hit like and subscribe to FMA discussion on YouTube. And I'll take care, and thank you for all those who had questions and commented. And take care.